Hello, I'm Jonathan O'Toole. I'm going to talk with you about LGBT so-called, or homosexuality so-called. The terminology is incorrect, but this is the short version. I've talked about this more than once on video and in print over the last uh, 25 years, and I've researched it extensively, so this is just off the top of my head, but this is the quick version. Now listen carefully and rewind it if you have to, because a lot of information is going to come out here. Now, I'm driving through South Dakota. I pulled over to do this, to answer a, um, a very foolish um, little editorial that I saw on a board for uh, Ruben Kagame for president, not by uh, candidate Kagame uh, himself, but by someone else who uh, was commenting on the forum. Now, the idea that terms, a very paramount idea, is that terms, terminology, language, and words are very important. Many words, especially throughout the 20th century and in the 21st century in the English language, have been corrupted or invented to hide the real meaning, their real meaning or the real meaning of the words that actually described the things being described. So the categories of thought have been changed. It's very strange. But if we go back to the original English language, there was no homosexual. And gay, let's just get this clear, gay meant joyful. If I'm being gay, I'm being joyful. Gaiety was uh, frivolity, joyfulness. They corrupted it, okay? It was an, a euphemism for um, sodomites, and that's the biblical wor word, the act of sodomy. And the English word from Henry VIII all the way into the early uh, 20th century was buggery. It was actually a felony crime called buggery. If a man buggered a man or buggered a little boy or buggered a woman by sodomizing her, by putting his penis where it doesn't belong, even in a woman, that was called buggery. And it was a felony. All right? Um, let me just begin physiologically. Right here, you have an, in your esophagus, you have an esophageal sphincter. I'm not a physician, but I know it to be the case. And I have documentation from physicians that if you uh, question any of this, I can provide the documentation. You have several sphincters in your body. What sphincters are, God, the Creator, has built one-way valves into human beings. They're parts of our body that are only supposed to flow one direction, okay? And the esophageal sphincter, if it's malfunctioning, you will have what is called um, acid reflux, okay? That's, that sphincter is flowing the wrong direction. You're getting acid from your stomach where it should never be, up in your mouth, up in your throat, and you're burping acid. Very painful, uh, causing heartburn and other very worse complications. Also in your heart, for example, there's a aortal sphincter, if I'm not mistaken, that, that uh, separates chambers of the heart. And if that one malfunctions, you will have a heart murmur, okay? Very, can be very serious, can be mild to very serious. Um, the point being that sphincters are one-way valves, check valves, we call them in the oil field and in plumbing, check valves that are allowed to, designed rather, to allow fluid or substances to go only one direction and not backwards the other direction. You have another very important sphincter in your body. Ask an OBGYN, ask a colorectal surgeon. It's called the anal sphincter. And the act of sodomy, whether it is performed, uh, the, the abuse of sodomy, whether it is uh, on the anus of a woman, the penetration by an object or by a penis, uh, which is an object, into the anus, um, causes damage not only on uh, other tender tissues there, but can uh, cause the anal sphincter to malfunction. And there are myriad of other diseases that can uh, result uh, from the penetration of the anal sphincter. Now, this idea that homosexuals are a category of people, let me stop and say there are no homosexuals. That's correct, there are no homosexuals. There's no biological category called homosexuality, okay? Sexuality comes from the same root that we get sect, as in a religious sect. It means you reproduce by virtue 
of sects or divisions by male and female, as opposed, for example, to an asexual creature. Could be a plant, or could be a uh, could be a uh, animal, a plant like sugarcane or a banana. Some can reproduce sexually, and some can reproduce by cuttings, which would be asexual reproduction. Now, an animal can, in some cases, uh, reproduce asexually. An example would be like a starfish. Or an earthworm is an animal which can reproduce either sexually or asexually. Uh, has both options. Now, the reason there is no homosexuality, there's no such creature as a homosexual, doesn't exist. Mahmoud uh, Ahmadinejad was in America about 10 years ago. And he laughed when uh, someone suggested, some journalist suggested that, um, uh, that uh, homosexuality was an inherited characteristic. And he laughed and he said, how would it be inherited? In reality, um, the depositing of semen into the rectum cannot pass on any characteristics because uh, all that happens is a terrible effect. Um, they did this to rabbits in the 1980s and it destroyed their immune system. Possibly, very probably, this is why uh, sodomites, people who sodomize or bugger one another, that's the real English word for it. There was a felony called buggery. They have compromised immune systems and have more of a problem with HIV and also with AIDS than others. Not only because the transmission of the HIV virus is easier through the unnatural act of acts that sodomites engage in, but because uh, semen just should not be in the rectum. It, in and of itself, even if there is no HIV virus, pooling semen in the rectum of a mammal has been demonstrated to uh, compromise the immune system. But I digress. It, the act does not convey any characteristic because no reproduct, no sodomite, no so-called homosexual will poop out a baby. All right, it's never going to happen. Now, the reason there's no homosexual, etymologically, linguistically, is because if someone masturbates, if you masturbate, if a woman masturbates, or if a man masturbates, that does not make him asexual, like an earthworm, or a starfish, or sugar cane, or a banana, reproducing by cutting. You can masturbate your whole life and never have sexual intercourse it's not heterosexual intercourse, it's sexual intercourse. Never have sexual intercourse with another uh, person of your species, of the opposite sex, and you will never produce another person. You will never clone yourself by masturbating. You are therefore not asexual. You are simply masturbating. You are doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. You're not reproducing whatsoever. You're just messing up. You're messing up really badly, okay? And even if you consistently mess up really badly for your whole life, it doesn't change the biological category that you belong to. You are sexual. There is no heterosexual. Sexuality, now listen carefully, implies heterogeneity. So heterosexual is redundant. It's like saying... Um, what do I say? It's like saying it's a, a, a black charcoal. Okay, black charcoal. Well, have you ever seen white charcoal? Charcoal is by nature black, correct? So there's no heterosexuality. You're saying different, different. No, it's not different, different. It's just sexuality. You reproduce by means of the sexes. So there is no homosexuality because there's no one who is sexual, reproducing by means of the sexes, male and female, who also reproduces by means of the same sex. It doesn't happen. You never, once again, get it through your head, step back, we've been fooled, we're using incorrect terminology, nobody ever poops out a baby. They're not born that way, they couldn't inherit that characteristic, because for any characteristic to be inherited, a sexual creature has to engage in sexual intercourse. So, even if a man's father or a man's mother was carrying some 
supposed hypothetical gene that tended toward uh, him committing the act of sodomy, in order to pass that characteristic on to the next generation, he had to stop sodomizing someone and actually engage at some level, by some means, in intercourse between the complementary sexes, male and female. So it is a perversion. It is a confusion. And by giving them fake-sounding, sciency sounding names and categories, it's like if you find a man that likes to bite his fingers off, and there are crazy people in mental institutions who do things like this, or a man who likes to cut himself with a knife. That's not a new kind of species, all right? That's not a special person with special rights. That's a confused person who is abusing himself. And if he categorizes himself as a new species, he's out of his damned mind, okay? His mind is reprobate. His mind is confused. He needs help. He doesn't need to be humored. If a man thinks he's a golden retriever, a dog, uh, there are women in mental institutions now who think they are cats. There are women who think they are dogs, okay? There are men who think they are cats. There are men who think they are dogs. If we tell them, oh, yes, that's what you are. We agree with them. Now we're abusing them and mocking their confusion. They need help. In terms of sodomy, when we give them sciency sounding names that do not bear examination, there is no homosexual. It's not a new biological category. Uh, you're not ever going to poop out a baby. Once we yield language to them, we have yielded our argument. We have added to their confusion. These poor people are already confused by whatever trauma or confusion or demonic or satanic spirit entered their lives. And now we are collaborating with Satan and with the confusion and confusing our children and confusing the English language by, and I, by the way, I applaud Uganda for the anti-homosexuality bill, but I want to encourage everyone to get back to language. In the Bible, it's the sin of Sodom. How does the Bible describe it? The Bible, and by the way, you don't have to be religious. Uh, you don't have to be a Christian. Christians and Muslims agree, essentially, on this point. Um, what Moses was told by God was that the reason the Canaanites, this is not a special law for the uh, Jews or the Israelites, the reason the Canaanites were kicked out of Canaan, one of the chief reasons was sodomy, laying with a man as though he were a woman, just like the delusional man who thinks he's a dog, so he's going to eat poop. By the way, sodomites also, many of them eat poop. And by sodomizing one another, they get poop inside their penises, another source of terrible infection, things uh, and abuse. But what, according to the book of Leviticus, God told Moses, okay, the prophet Moses, that the reason the Canaanites were vomited out of the land, the land vomited them out because of the deeds that they did. And one of them was men, they decriminalized the act of men, laying with men as though they were women, laying down with a man as though he's a woman, abusing that man, using another man as a masturbatory aid. It doesn't change your biological category. It just means you're messing up really bad. And any nation that tolerates it, any tribe that tolerates it, any people that decriminalizes it, whether it's the wicked and reprobate United States of America, or any African or Muslim or Asian nation that follows our wicked example and is seduced or coerced to legalize it, guess what? According to God's word, not my word, God's word to Moses, you, unless you repent and recriminalize it, the Bible says put them to death. But you no longer have the right to exist on God's earth. And God's not going to destroy you. He doesn't need to because the earth herself, the Bible says the earth will vomit you out, doesn't even need God's help. God made the earth. The earth is disgusted, according to God, to the point of vomiting. Okay, vomiting. You have no right to exist 
as a tribe, as a nation, as a people, as a race, as a culture. If you become corrupted to the point where you decriminalize sodomy. <laughs> 